So how long have you been in Charlotte? Uh, so I'm originally born in Charlotte, and so I've been here um, all, all my life, all my okay. life. And so uh, uh, I went away for about five years for school. Um, okay. I went to Catawba College in Salisbury, North Carolina. I uh, for about a year and a half, and then I transferred out to uh, UNCG in Greensboro. Okay. So how long were you in Greensboro? In Greensboro, uh, uh, th- what, three and a half years, three and a half years, completing okay. my uh, undergraduate degree in okay. business administration. Okay. Neat. Well, thanks for taking time out of your Sunday to do this. Yeah. You yeah. as well. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, no. I So I first heard about it when you reached out to me on Instagram, and we had a great conversation over the phone. So I've been really looking forward to this. And for the listeners, we did our best to try to bring in somebody who had experienced homelessness. And we actually had somebody lined up, but they had to had to cancel last minute. So it'll just be us today, but we will get somebody in here eventually to, to give that viewpoint. I mean, you're probably aware of a lot of the statistics, but North Carolina, I think as of 2018, had between nine and 10,000 people who were homeless, like on a given day. And I think Charlotte makes up about like 1,700 yeah, of that. I believe so. I believe so. So, and I don't know if that sounds like a lot or a little to people, but that, I mean, to me, that that's crazy that there are thousands of people just living on the streets, like around us. Yeah. So, can you talk a little bit about what your organization, Smell the Roses, is doing to combat that and really kind of what what led you to want to get involved in that? Yeah, sure. So uh, Smell the Roses is a nonprofit organization that's focused on uh, creating a, a bridge, a bridge that's uh, that's built by resources, uh, opportunities. Uh, and, and this bridge helps these individuals experiencing homelessness get reintegrated back into the community. And so uh, the way we like to create this, form this bridge is with um, uh, working with uh, local businesses that provide um, haircuts, um, Restaurants that provide meals, working with uh, numerous other outlets that prov- that can provide a source of uh, an outlet for individuals experiencing homelessness. And so, just like you said, we have about uh, seventeen hundred individuals experiencing homelessness here in Greensboro. And so, uh, I mean, not Greensboro, sorry, <laughs> Charlotte, yeah, <laughs> Charlotte, Charlotte. North Carolina. And so, that's that's seventeen hundred people that have been without uh, certain basic basic needs, you know, throughout. The, the time frame of being homeless. And so with our organization, um, we, we want to restore those needs. And so uh, for us, you know, we get a haircut maybe once every, uh, every two weeks, you know, and right. so if an individual, if an individual experiencing homelessness may go months without that, you know, and, and through that, they're losing their sense of uh, dignity. Um, they're getting um, judged by the general public when they look at them, you know, based off their appearance. And so a lot of that just breaks down an individual. And I believe stuff like that prolongs, uh, an individual's homelessness, especially if they don't have the proper resources around them to help them get out of that situation. And so us uh, ne- uh, partnering with local uh, um, salons, we're able to provide these individuals these services, you know, for free, help them restore their dignity. And so once you get that confidence again and somebody tells you, you look beautiful, you look good, you know, mm. it, it changes your mindset. You you start looking at the, uh, the possibilities like... Um, Say you went out you two months without a haircut. And now you get that haircut. You're like, wow, I I enjoy this. I want to work hard to get back to this now, you know. And so, just um, taking these individuals out for uh, a day through our sense of purpose program, uh, they're just um, being able to get their self confidence back, restored, um, getting their dignity back, helping them become feel more human again. Mm-hmm. You know, restoring that, restoring what was once. What was once missing, you know, once you miss all that and you don't have it for so long, you get comfortable uh, or stagnant, you know, in your current mm. situation. Yeah, that's huge. And we have no clue even what that's like. I mean, I've never experienced homelessness or anything like that, but I think that's one thing that people forget or maybe don't think about when it comes to homelessness. You know, you hear skeptical people, well, just go, go get a job, go walk in and go apply. But if you think their self-worth is at an all-time low, they don't have access to to their basic needs, you know, food, water, and shelter. And then, you know, they can't even keep themselves clean. They don't have the opportunity to do that. And like you mentioned, a haircut mm-hmm. where, I mean, you know how you feel after you don't shower for like a day or two or, or you're looking raggedy because you don't have, you haven't had a haircut. But now imagine doing that for a, a couple of weeks and then people are telling you, okay, we'll just go walk into a restaurant and apply for a job. Like, I think it's a lot harder than, 
than that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, a lot of people say, you know, why don't you just apply for a job? It, just like you said, it's a lot harder than that. You know, even applying for the job, you have to have confidence within that. You know, and it's hard when you don't have anything. Nobody's telling you you can do something. You don't have confidence. You know, I know if I want to apply for a job, I got to believe that I can get it. You know, I have to have right. that. You know, we don't have that. It, there's no point, you know, especially if you don't have an address, if you don't have clean clothes, if your appearance isn't good. You know, we live in a world where a lot of people judge you based off your appearance before they, you know, even want to um, get to read the book, get to know exactly who you are. And so um, for individuals experiencing homelessness, it's so hard. It's so mm-hmm. hard to, you know, to have that um, opportunity. And so that's why I'm so happy about what I do, you know, because uh, working with the the people that we partner with, we may find an opportunity through that, you know, where, they've encountered this individual and they're like, okay, we like this guy. You know, reach out to us saying, if you, if this person is looking for a job, we want to hire them, you know? And so we're creating a space where um, these resources and tools are available for these individuals experiencing homelessness. Yeah, no, that's, that's so needed. And when you go to these businesses, when you're trying to establish these partnerships, what is the response of the business owners been? Um, it, it's been very well. It's been very well. Um, one big thing that I noticed is that uh, a lot of people, a lot of organiza- a lot of businesses, they want to help, but they just don't know how. You know, they don't know uh, what's enough or how to go about it because um, it's just again, it's just like you know, being a regular individual, you have these stigmas, you know, and so it's the same thing as a business. You you don't want these individuals coming into your place and and ruining or making what you've built seem. Uh, you may think that the perception of your place exactly. has been like degraded or, or exactly. lower class or something. Exactly. And you don't want to start, store, I mean, uh, start customers away. But when you, uh, they, they like the idea that it's not just that individual coming there, but it's somebody from the organization coming with them, you know? And so they like that. And also one thing that I picked up is that um, a lot of organizations are, are, I mean, businesses are, are open to the idea when they can do it. It's like, you know, they're volunteering for maybe a couple of times out of the month, you know, instead of saying, you know, we're doing this every day with your business. They're like, <laughs> you know, that's a lot of money out of our pockets. But right. when you're like, you know, maybe three times out of the month, if we be open to partnering with us, they're like, yeah, sure, we'll do that. It's not a problem, you know. That's pretty neat. I mean, I think that's what it takes to to help people in need. It's, it's you can do, you know, your part in building relationships and friendships with these people. But I think it does take the support from the community as well. Like local business is willing to maybe forego a little bit of profit to, to help people that need it. Exactly, exactly. So how do you typically get in touch with the people that, like the homeless people? Mm-hmm. Where do you typically find them? Um, so while I was in uh, Greensboro starting the organization, um, a, a few things that I was able to pick up that I thought was just in Greensboro, but I found out was also here in Charlotte, I'm sure it's prevalent everywhere else where homeless people are, is that a lot of the homeless individuals, when there is a certain cutoff at the shelter saying, say that you can't be at the shelter after uh, uh, 1 p.m. Mm-hmm. because they're doing or cleaning or something or, you know, they won't serve lunch until 3. Many people, they go to the libraries. That's where a lot of them stay at. They go to the libraries until it's time for them to head back to the shelter. And so that's one thing I noticed in Greensboro. And uh, so when I came down here to Charlotte, it was the same exact thing. You know, the library is one of the uh, the safest place, you know, the safest place and most productive place for individuals experiencing homelessness to go to. And um, so uh, one thing that I like to do before I reach out to other shelters, you know, I want to... Uh, get advice or listen out to those who are at the library because I can hear from them what they think about other organizations that are helping the homeless. How has it helped you? Um, what is it that you're looking for? You know, I want to ask them before I go to these other organizations and figure out exactly what um, uh, tools and resources they're offering to individuals experiencing Okay. So it's really you just going out and and building relationships with people, just meeting people. Yeah. yeah. And is that kind of how it started in Greensboro? Yeah, just like that. Um the I was I think I was in my junior year, uh, didn't have a car at the time, I had a bike, and so I would dr- ride my bike downtown, and um, you know I had the idea of, of the organization, and I would go to somebody who I thought who I you know just based off appearance I assumed was experiencing homelessness, and offer them you know this program I was doing, and like oh free haircuts, free meals, da da da, you know people were like oh yeah I, I like that I like that, but um the thing is you know everybody likes free stuff, but when they get into it and they realize exactly what it is. It's about, you know, helping you share your story, helping the community destroy their their stigmas and stereotypes that they have, that that's have been placed on you. You're like, wow, 
that, you know, I'm interested because I want somebody to hear my story. I want these people that pass by me every day to realize that I'm somebody. And so um, just like, yeah, it started just like that, just riding around asking people, telling them, you know, this is something I'm doing. Would you be interested? And, and they're like, yeah, I'm down. Yeah, I think there's a huge stigma and a huge misconception against the homeless population. Were there any like common like, themes or circumstances that you noticed that that led people to from to homelessness? Yeah. So, um so far we've worked with about like 50 people and I want to say 75% of those individuals that um uh, became homeless they became homeless due to uh, any uh, some type of relationship. If it was a divorce or abuse in a relationship, that's what led them to become homeless. Uh, I remember there was this one guy we worked with in Greensboro who um, has been homeless for about 15 years. Wow. And that was due to a, a divorce. You know, his wife took everything. And that, that impacted him so much that he just basically just stopped, stopped living, you know, and... It, it's sad because you see somebody like that. A lot of people go through divorces, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes they have a brother or a cousin or a good friend who can help them heal through that. But when you don't have anybody, you know, you don't have those resources, somebody be there like, oh, it's okay. You know, it's hard. You feel like you're by yourself. And so that's that's one of the biggest things, divorce and uh, 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 abusive relationships, okay. especially with uh, with women, with women. Yeah, yeah, I, that doesn't surprise me. That's, yeah, I think a lot of people don't think about that. They often think, that a person made a poor decision that, that led them to that situation. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's the case. And yes. look, I mean, I'm sure it could be a combination of bad decisions and just life circumstances, but I don't think that excludes a person from from needing help and needing to get back on their feet. Mm -hmm. I met this guy in February. I was coming out of a restaurant in Uptown at night. It was cold. It was like low 40s, raining. And as soon as I stepped out of the restaurant, this guy came up to me and said, hey, can you help me get a meal? And, you know, when somebody asks for a meal, it's like, okay, this, this guy's hungry. He needs food. So I was like, yeah, okay, I'll take you to go get a meal. So we went to a food truck. And while we were waiting in line, I asked him, like, what happened? What led to, to you being homeless? And it was really just a series of unfortunate circumstances. I think he was in between jobs. I don't know why, but he didn't have, like, car insurance or health insurance. Got in an accident, totaled his car. Mm -hmm busted his leg, so he wasn't able to work. And I don't know the whole details of the situation, but basically he had he was swamped with medical bills, wasn't able to pay rent, and his son had just been deployed like a few months before that. So, And his son was the only person he had. So he was left with nothing. He was like sleeping on the streets. And he was like, went from being just a normal guy, you know, had a, him and his son, it sounded like they had a good relationship, but his son got deployed and then, a few bad things happened to him and he's on the streets. Yeah. And he, he couldn't even get in touch with his son. He yeah. said, I don't even know where he's at. I can't get in touch with him. They won't let me, you know, based on wherever he was at, they weren't allowed to talk. And it was sad. It wasn't really his fault. And one thing led to another and and he was homeless. Yeah. I feel like that happens a lot. Yeah, it does. It does. You know, that's, it's it's so sad, you know, it's not just him. There's so many other people out there who have different stories that just, you know, a series of unfortunate events. And then even there's some people that, you know, sometimes it was self-inflicted, but, you know, all of us have things, you know, that we uh, deal with. Absolutely. You know, we cause ourselves trouble all the time, you know, but the one thing that separates, you know, us from them is just having resources and opportunities to get over those, you know, those barriers in our life that we, that we sometimes we build ourselves or, you know, has been just, put before us, you know? Right. So yeah, no, because like if that were to happen to me for some reason, like I would have people who I would be able to, who would let me like stay with them or like my parents would, of course, like take me in. Like, and it's, but a lot of people don't have that. And I don't think people that aren't in that situation often like think through often is, mm -hmm. it's just, it, it's rough. Yeah. And that's one thing we want to uh, put out there, you know, through our Sense of Purpose program where we sh share these individual stories is just letting people know that you, have to be uh, thankful for what you have. You know, your brother who annoys you every day, be thankful that you have yeah. him. You know, that's somebody yeah. you can call on. You know, somebody became homeless because they didn't have that annoying brother. Mm -hmm. You know, they yeah. didn't have that help, you know. And so I went to uh, 
uh, what was it? Uh, sometime last year, um, no, last month. Sorry, last month I had uh, I went to go speak at this conference in High Point about you know what I'm doing in the, in the community, and so there was a lot of there was a huge group of women there, and uh, I we do this program called the Shelter Project where we have three jars, and these jars I ask three questions, and so one of the questions is like. Um, uh, name somebody in your family who has helped you overcome something, you know? And so people right there, my mom, she helped me deal with this. My brother helped me deal with that. And I was like, imagine if you didn't have these people in your life, mm-hmm. you know, where would you be right now? Right. If you didn't have these people in your life, you know? And so asking people questions like that, is just, it just makes them think. It's like, wow. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. Just taking time to reflect on like what you have and what your life would be without it. You become so accustomed to your lifestyle and, you know, you look at just basic needs. I can ask myself, okay, if I'm really stressed or anxious about something or complaining about something dumb, like, okay, do I have access to food, water, shelter? Yeah. Am I safe? Do I have people around me who care about me? Yes. It, those are, if all those things are yes, which for me, like they are all the time, then I, I should be so grateful. But a lot of people don't even have that, the, the Maslow's, hierarchy of needs, you know, that, that first level of just mm-hmm. physiological needs, food, water, and shelter. And that second needs safety. Like and many people don't even have that, you know, let, let alone, you know, people in their lives or a job that gives them a sense of purpose. It's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, um, I can't imagine. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's, it's really tough. It's really tough, you know, and just like you said, a lot of people don't have those basic needs and, you know, we have, uh, through our sense of purpose program, we do a backpack. And in the backpack, we provide, you know, basic essentials and stuff like that. Socks, the basic hygiene kit, socks and stuff like that. And it's just so crazy when you give somebody this bag and you tell them that you have these hygiene kits inside. They're like, yes, thank you. I needed that. And it's like, you just, I, you know, for me, I just reflect. I'm like, I have a whole drawer back at home with socks that sometimes I don't even wear. And I buy new ones all the time. And here's somebody who's just like, you know, praising me for being able to provide them this. It's like, man, life is, life is so crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is. And are you, so you have these hygiene products that you can provide them and like take them to get a haircut and a meal. Have you been able to partner with anybody to help with like employment? Um, the, the, the only people that I've been able to partner with would be like the, the restaurants that we worked with or the salons we worked with. So say we come across somebody who's been experiencing homelessness and they have a background in cooking, you know, I will approach one of my, uh, partnering restaurants and tell them, you know, if you're interested, we have somebody who has been, who, you know, has background in cooking. Our most recent employment was in, in Greensboro where we had, uh, one of our clients who used to cut hair so a long time ago, but was, a uh, had a uh, was arrested and had a felony on a record, so it was hard, so hard for them to get a job. But um, based off their first interaction with our community partner who provided our hairstylist, who provided the hairstyle, mm-hmm. they they enjoyed the person, you know, and so they had a good interaction because they got to know that person for who they were. And so uh, I just talked to them like, "Yo, this guy, you know, he he used to cut hair, you know. Unfortunately, he came across, you know, this bad situation where he got in trouble. But you know, if you guys would be able to offer him the opportunity, like, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll give it a try. And so that was about a year ago. So he's still working there now, you oh, know. That's great. And so yeah, and so that's why it, it's so powerful when you get to put these people in these spaces where they're not judged. You know, people see them for who they are, and they get to know them. And then you're able to offer them that opportunity back, saying, "Hey, they want to hire you." You know, you, you're helping people get out of that situation because you're no longer we're no longer putting these barriers uh, that they had the lack of resources and stuff. We're, we're creating that pathway for them, pathway to be able to, you know, get out of that situation of homelessness. Yeah. Yeah, I think it really changes your perspective when you put a, a face to it. It becomes more than just like an issue or a cause. It's easy to just throw a blanket over, oh, well, okay, homelessness. But when you know somebody and when you meet somebody face-to-face and you hear their story and you see like, man, this person is a human being just like me with feelings and, and, uh, and, you know, self-worth and, and they want the same things that I do. Mm-hmm. It becomes very different. It does. It and does. you really see somebody for, for, for who they are rather than just this issue or a series of bad circumstances and mistakes. Yeah. Like, um, a lot of people just view homelessness as there's that, that one face, that one face, they're lazy, they're a bum, you know, they're smelly, 
da, 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 but it's, it's it's so much deeper than that. And one thing I like about what you said is that, you know, the guy that you met, he came to you actually for food and you asked him, you know, what was your situation? That's all it takes, you know, for somebody to to offer somebody food and, and just sit down and talk with them. Because a lot of my interactions have been that way. And then you hear their stories. And every time you hear somebody's story, your face that you have with homelessness changes. You're seeing multiple Absolutely. faces. And you're like, oh, this, 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 this. And it's no longer that one box that you put homelessness in. It's like, oh, man, that could have been my cousin. You know, they right. went through the same situation. That could have been this, that. Now, you know, you're, you're seeing the different faces of homelessness. Right. Yeah. I mean— did, have you gotten any kind of sense of what the community is like among themselves, like mm-hmm. among the homeless community? Like, is there a, uh, and it maybe sounds weird to say, but is there like a camaraderie or a competitiveness among like, the homeless community? Do you um, know? <laughs> it, it really depends. It depends on exactly um, what it is. Like, you know, there's, you have the panhandlers, you know, and there's definitely, I guess, uh, a camaraderie there where people, they work together because they know what corner, you know, you can get the most money from. And so uh, the one thing I like to say about panhandling, though, um, that's 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 one way that a lot of individuals experience homes, you know, they can afford money, you know, but uh, they, they don't want to do that. You know, that's the best thing that they can do right now. You know, it's not something that they... If they had the option, if they had a job, somebody told you, you, you know, I have a job for you, you don't have to do this, they would take it, you know. But unfortunately, right. their situation, they that's the best thing you you can do. You know, we wake up every day to go to work because that's the our best option right now to make money. And so if you don't have a legitimate job and you have to make money, that's the best thing you can do, especially if you're in your situation where that's I want to say is um stigmatized that, you know, that's 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 what it is, you know. That's a good way to look at it. I mean, they're they're not out there because they wanna be, you know. And I don't know. I'm thinking if I was in that situation, people think to panhandlers, why aren't you out looking for a job? Well, when you haven't showered in a couple of weeks and you're not confident in yourself to go get a job, you could spend all day trying to get a job. And then at the end of the day, you made no progress. You still didn't get, a, you're not going to get a paycheck that day, even mm-hmm. if you do get a job and you need to eat. Mm-hmm. So it's like, where do you spend your time? You know, I feel like that would probably be a difficult decision. Like I need money, but also you want to get a job. So yeah, I think, no, what you're doing and like being able to kind of be an advocate for the person, I think is so important because everybody needs that. You know, everybody needs help at some point. I agree. So being able to do that, I think is, is really neat. What do you think like the biggest thing that a person can do to help somebody when they're homeless? Like they walk by them on the street, people in Uptown, I mean, you see it, all the time. What's the most helpful thing that a person who's not in that situation could do to help someone like that? I would say the most helpful, the most simplest thing that we do every day is talk to them. Just like that. There's so many people that I've talked to that me just remembering their name is something that surprises them and makes them feel happy. Like, oh, you remembered me. You know, I was like, I just I just met you yesterday, dude. You know what I'm saying? It was just yesterday I met you. But they, you know, there's so many people that go if you, you know, once they're homeless, they go periods without interaction. You know, they they forget their language because they haven't spoken to people in like five years. You know, I've met this one person who just, just you can't, it, it, what they're saying is so unclear, but you wouldn't believe at one point they were like a straight student, you know? Wow. Yeah. But once you become homeless and people, they have that face for you, they don't want to talk to you. It's like, you're, t- you know, you you don't talk to anybody. You know, you go years without it, without communication, without human interaction. It's it, it, that so. Oh, man. Yeah, that's and it's pretty bizarre when you think about it. How most people just walk by, and I've, I mean, I've done it. I've done it several times, but like you just walk by somebody and ignore them completely. Like that's a that's a human being, and that's got to do something like psychologically and, and mentally to you. Just like these people, they have the resources. You know, you know that when they walk by as a homeless person, you know that they can help you. Mm-hmm. And just day by day, hundreds of people walk by you and just completely ignore you. Mm-hmm. I imagine that's got to take a, a toll mentally. Yeah. A lot of people who, uh, a lot of people who you see uh, experience homelessness that have mental illness, uh, there's a good, pers- uh, most likely they develop that mental illness during homelessness, you know, because just like you said, it's a sol- psychological thing. If I go to a place and I see people just stare at me weird, I'm like, okay, I don't feel good here. I need to leave. But when you have no place to go and you have to sit there 
every day and you're like, oh my gosh. Right. It, there's you know it, it's 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 something that can definitely deteriorate you you know because then you your your self worth is just down here and so your self esteem every every level of your your mentality is just at the the bottom you know and so right. you develop this mental illness where you start talking to yourself you start you know just finicking and doing all this stuff you know so wow. it's 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 so crazy man it's so crazy that, wow yeah it's got to be so I mean number one just stressful yes. knowing like we stress about the craziest things, mm. you know, like, I don't know. We, we stress about those things that are way high up on that scale that really aren't going to impact our day-to-day lives, things that aren't going to impact whether or not I can eat that day. I mean, these people, they're, what they're stressed about is just that basic level, their basic needs. Am I going to be able to eat today? And so it's, it's stressful. I imagine being homeless is isolating too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's so isolating. And one thing that um it's one thing I like about this journey that I've been on helping homelessness, I there's things that I pick up on. It's like, wow, if people knew this, they would they would, you know, be quick to help. And so one thing that I picked up early, um, and this goes to regards to like shelters and people experiencing homelessness is that, you know, regular people, um, if you want to be successful or a good term they like to use, then if you want to be a millionaire, surround yourself with five, you'll be the six. But if you're homeless, you're surrounded by other homeless people, you know? And right. it's so hard, especially if you don't see a positive light there. Somebody who is doing well and wants to help you, you know? It, it's so hard, you know? It's 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 terrifying because I, for myself, you know, I want to be successful. And so I, if I have a circle of friends, I want to make sure everybody in my circle is successful and being able to help each other. But if you're in a shelter and it's everybody around you is homeless, what is there to look at? to want to help you uplift yourself, you know, when everybody right. around you is going through the same situation, you know? Yeah. It's so hard. Yeah, how do you surround yourself with with positive and successful people mm-hmm. when you're homeless? You're homeless, you know, and you're surrounded by other people going through the same thing you're doing. And so that's why, you know, I like what we're doing because we're taking those people out of that situation, you know? We're taking them out of there, showing them, you know, what's possible, you know? And so they see that and they're like, okay, this was a positive thing. This is re- uh, reinforcing me that I, I can do this. I can get back on my feet because I I've enjoyed today so much. I want to enjoy it again tomorrow. I want to enjoy it again next week. So I want to work hard to get out of the situation. You know. Yeah. So has your experience with Smell the Roses made you more pessimistic or optimistic about human <laughs> beings in general? Uh, uh, I'll say both. I'll say okay. both. Uh, optimistic. Because every time that I see somebody uh, sitting out with a homeless person just talking, I'm like, okay, we're going towards, we're going somewhere. But mm-hmm. pessimistic, uh, every time when I see people just stare down at them, I'm like, oh my gosh, right? Man. Just, just take a chance to get to know the person. You know, you, right? You, you find out they maybe went to the same school you did. You know, we're in the same, same graduating class as you, and it's, it's, oh, man, it's just. It stresses me out sometimes thinking about it, you know, right. especially when you when you look at there's 1,700 people experiencing homelessness in Charlotte, North Carolina, and then you have about 800,000 people living here. It's like, right? come on, man. Yeah, if everybody just a little bit, just a little like bit. not even that much, just a little just bit. Not even, yeah, just yeah. a little bit, you know, it's, it's, it's just so confusing, you know, yeah. it's so confusing. Yeah, and I think part of it is we go about our day-to-day lives and it's easy to be in these pockets where you don't see it. I mean, honestly, like up until probably a year, year and a half ago, when I kind of started getting involved in um, the nonprofit community here in Charlotte, it just, you'd go to your car, to your office, you'd go home and just forget about it. Mm -hmm. And I think you almost try to, because Mm -hmm. if you think about it, like you said, it almost stresses you out when you start to, like that's a person right there. You know, and they're not going to, they may not eat tonight and they're going to sleep on that bench tonight. You start thinking about it, it gets, it gets stressful, but I think that's necessary, mm-hmm. you know, to, to be able to help that problem. But it is easy, especially in Charlotte where you have these pockets, to just pass by and keep going about your day. But do you think homelessness like can be solved? Like, do you think there is, I mean, I think it takes every, everybody in order to, to fix it, but what do you think the solution is? Um, I, I do think homelessness can be solved here and anywhere every, anywhere else. I think just having the community involved can definitely help. You know, I feel like if we rely too much on these big organizations or the government agencies to help individuals, it, there's 
we can't do it because then you have those 1,700 people applying for the same the same thing, the same housing, the same stuff, and they're on a waiting list. There's waiting lists now where it's like two years long, three years right. long, you know, but when we can have somebody in the community who, say, is a developer who can say, okay, we can help this, I mean, you know, a hundred of you guys can stay here for a certain amount of time or, not, or people who want to, you know, just let somebody stay at the Airbnb, you know, until they find a job. And, you know, it's, there's so many opportunities yeah. out there, you know, but yeah. we have to advocate. We have to teach people about this and, and get people connected and get people wanted, wanting to help to make something, make a big change. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. I think it, I, I don't think there's one answer. Like, I don't think it's like, okay, well, the government's going to solve this. Well, it's businesses, jobs. Well, it's other people. It's it's everyone. Exactly. It's it's us. It's people. It's uh, religious organizations. It's the government. It's it's com- corporations, businesses. I think you all group together, like you can really, I think, solve a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. But I think it takes awareness and, and make people see the problem for what it is. Exactly. And that's one thing that I, I that I picked up. I feel like a lot of people... They know about homelessness, but they don't really put forth the effort to help because they they can't connect to it. You know, just like you said, if you 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 don't know what homelessness like homelessness is like if you haven't experienced it yourself, or at least talked to people and heard you know their stories. And the one thing I like to um, relate it to is like uh, breast cancer awareness. There's such a big movement for that because a lot of people can connect to that. You know, they've had their mom, they had their dad, or they, you know, people in their family. And so there's so many people that connect to breast cancer. But if homeless people, if home, homeless organization is so hard because nobody has experienced that. And so there's no connection there. You have to build that right. connection. And I believe one way you build that connection is just by the stories, you know, from people hearing what somebody else has been through because a lot of, that's how we can connect. You know, you can say right. that you've been through something. I'm like, oh man, I, I've been through something similar to that or I know somebody who's been through something. And so right. through that connection you build, I feel you can build more um, awareness within the community and people can interact with that and understand, okay, this is something that I can do. I can help somebody because now right. I understand the situation. I can connect with that. I want to be able to help. Right. Yeah. Have you Have you found a way to communicate the misconception of homelessness like to people that aren't aren't in that community have never experienced it and when you tell people what you do I mean how do you go about like presenting the problem in a way that it sticks yeah stories is a big way um one thing that I'm trying to branch out to is uh through media as well you know because people like to see stuff people like to to see you know I could speak all day about what I'm doing but if somebody can't see it right it you know it, they don't really get that same feeling and so um, the stories and doing uh, media things where people can can view stuff. I feel like that's the one one big way to um, for people to understand, you know, what it is experiencing homelessness. And there's no better way to understand from other than hearing it from somebody themselves. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that's why you know it's important to to give those people a voice. Mm-hmm. I mean, which is why we we wanted somebody um, in here. And I think in the future, I'd love to get mm-hmm. somebody in uh, to to give their perspective. Somebody who's been through it. I think is important. Have you seen any like children or fam families that have been homeless? Like oh, in your yeah. experience? Oh yeah, there's 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 been so many people that have so many children and families that I've seen experiencing homelessness, and that's that's one thing I hope in the future that our organization can provide is just like uh, a day for those families just to forget about what's going on and for them to enjoy themselves. You know, because it's it's so I, I couldn't even imagine you know being uh, a mother to three kids and you. You know, you're trying to raise them the best way you can, but it's, you have the lack of resources and it's so hard, you know, and constantly, you know, disappointing them and telling them you can't do this or we can't buy that, you know, and just for us, our organization to one day just be able to be like, you know, don't worry about it. Your kids are eating on us today. We can take you guys to Carowinds, you know, just, just to forget, you know, and I feel like one of the best things um, is to create a memory, you know, a memory that uh, will, is forever lasting. And that's, that's one thing I feel also um, helps helps you feel good you know because right. I could sit here and recall a memory of something positive in my life and I'm feeling good you know and so when you can create an experience and be able to uh, uh, develop this type of memory that creates a positive feeling and lasts forever it's, it's a good thing and so yeah no that is an important part of of well being overall well-being is positive emotions and as a homeless person that's probably not something you experience very often mm-hmm. so what is your like long-term vision for Smell the Roses? What do you see this becoming? Um, I, I see it becoming a, 
an organization that was able to help or that is to help um, get our community involved. Uh, the, the way that I envision the organization is that we have a, a large group of uh, volunteers that take our clients on a sense of purpose program. And so you have volunteers that volunteer to take an individual to our community partner restaurant or community partner salon or community partner. Uh, one thing I like to do is an entertainment space. Uh, so one place that we partnered with in Greensboro is a virtual arcade place. Mm. And so you have somebody, you know, experience homeless to go play video games, the virtual arcade. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they're having so much fun, right. you know. And so uh, having our volunteers take, you know, these individuals to our community partners, you know, this, this circle of resources for these individuals. And, you know, and so now that person who is the volunteer also gets to know this person experiencing homelessness and gets to meet our community partners. And the person who is experiencing homelessness gets to meet the volunteer. And it's just like, it's a huge web of where people get to know each other and get to share their stories and their experience. And so one thing that really moves that is word of mouth, because then that volunteer goes back to his friends and like, hey, let me tell you about this homeless guy I met. And right. then it's, it's, it's something that I definitely see developing to be a, a, a huge, a huge program here in the city of Charlotte. And just uh, something that will be able to push people and connect them with uh, the homeless community. Yeah. Yeah. And you're helping really both sides. You're mm-hmm. helping that homeless person have f- feel a sense of self worth. Mm-hmm. Like, even it's just, I mean, for that day, you know, hopefully you're creating something that can last a while. You know, you clean up, you give them a meal, um, maybe connect them with potential like employment opportunities, but you're helping them like build a relationship with somebody, which again, as we said, is another important part of personal well being. And then for the volunteer, they're seeing a new perspective on homelessness that maybe they didn't see before. Like, now they have a name and a face and a story. When they think of homeless, yeah. homeless community in Charlotte, I agree. I feel like a lot of things right now have been being done one sided. You know, that's why we still have those stigmas. You know, because nobody gets to see the other side. You know, you see, there's a lot of organization that just works for the homeless. That's that's good. That's what right. we want. We want these people to be to be held. But say you have. 200 people and organizations working with that one year, they help those individuals. Then there's another 200 that come. But us as a community, we still have those stigmas. You know, it doesn't matter if you work a thousand people that year, we still have those stigmas. But when you're able to work both sides and share the stories of these 200 to the community, they're like, oh man, right. I, I understand now, you know? And so yeah. you don't have to worry, the organization doesn't have to worry about solely providing their services for the 200, they can they can also rely on the community now to help, you know? And so working both sides where you're helping the homeless and you're helping the community both understand their values, it's a, it's a big thing. Yeah. No, you got to find those people that are willing to, to build a relationship. Exactly. I think, and it takes stepping outside your comfort zone, I think, um, to be able to go sit down with somebody you don't know, somebody that you know is going through something hard um, and being willing to just listen. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the like most valuable things is taking the time to, to hear someone and like let them know that what they've been through, what they're feeling matters. You know, it's not just, I mean, which look, they, they need obviously food and, and water and hygiene products. That's fantastic. And, and they need all that. But like being able to sit down and talk with somebody, I think there's huge value to that. Yeah, so much. And, and that's one thing I've, I've picked up, you know, just when I would work with somebody, you know, give them my phone number and stuff, they would call me, you know, just to check on how I'm doing and stuff. Because I made such an impact in their life that, you know, they, you know, they want to build a friendship, a relationship. And I'm like, yeah, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm down for that, you know, because it's, it's good, you know, and it's so hard when you're in that situation, especially when you don't have anybody to trust, anybody to trust, to talk to, to tell them how your day was, how you're feeling, you know. And then one thing that I've, that I heard is that, it's harder when you're going through a, a good day and then you go back to the shelter where everybody else most likely had a bad day and then you're sharing that good news with somebody who's still down. It's so hard, you know? And mm-hmm. so you keep everything balled up inside, you know, which... Yeah, even the good days, you, can't, even the good you days, feel you like can't, you can't share with someone. Yeah. Man, it's, I never would have even thought of that. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, man. Because I have people to share my good days with and people that are happy for me. But if you're around other people that they had a terrible day, they don't want you're, to you're not going to feel comfortable sharing that with them. exactly, so, exactly. Man. So it's just so much that I've picked up, man. It's like wow, right? Just even sharing good news is hard for you, mm-hmm. you know, man. It's, it's, so it's how long? Insane. How long have you been doing this now? Uh, for two two years and like seven months since it's been like the official. You were 
Uh, it sounded like you were kind of meeting with some people before that, right? Yeah, yeah, before yeah. that. So, I, yeah, I think I got my five hundred one c three status about like yeah two years two about two years ago. Okay, that's great. Where do you need or want volunteers at this point? Like, and I mean, I I, I know nonprofits always need funding. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> funding is definitely one big thing. But I feel like all that will come. You know, one thing is definitely um, getting volunteers and and being able to find a, a group of individuals that would be willing to help me build this in this city, you know, cause I came here, just wanted to start everything fresh. You know, I'm from the city. I want to be able to, 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 you know, envision what I want and to be do it here and, you know, in my city, in my hometown. And so just be able to find a group of people that would be able to help me push this forward and, and, and really want to help uh, bring a, a big change to individuals experiencing homelessness and also uh, a big change to the, our community members here as well and help them realize, you know, this is something that we need to pay major attention to and, and, and help individuals that are experiencing homelessness get out of their situation and be more valued. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Why well, it's needed. And I, um, I'm excited about where smell the roses is going to go. Cause I think you get somebody like you that's passionate about it and really cares. Um, yeah, you're going to do awesome things. Yeah. Is there any like social media? Like where do you want people to go to get involved? Yeah, so we have our uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and our Facebook all under the same uh, tag. It's Smell the Roses, the letter NP, which stands for nonprofit. So uh, Smell the Roses NP. Okay. And people can like donate or find out how to volunteer through your website? Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Okay. All right. Anything else that you want to plug that you want people to know about? Um. Just like I mentioned earlier, if you see somebody experiencing homelessness, you know, just just tell them hello. Just say hello. You know, how's your day? Wish you have a good day. Have a good night. You know, that's stuff like that really matters. Really matters. Hey, yeah. Thanks again for doing this, man. Really, really appreciate it. Appreciate you, Andy. Thank you for doing what you do. Yeah. Thank you.